I'm sure that, I'm it sure was, they were, you know, I that can't, was cool. nobody can go and say that. Mm -hmm. Someday. Um, yeah. But you know what, I, can I uh, just okay. bother you to uh, check My with the camera and see if he's ready sure. to start at 7.30? Not a problem. Uh, yeah. He speaks Spanish. So. But I feel confident with the volume of... He checked it out. I mean, the FBI says it's just an okay place to travel. It's not a considered dangerous, whatever, one place in Costa Rica. That's a... A lot of fishermen go oh, down there. They yeah. love it down there. Yeah, and me. <laughs> a lot of honeymooners are going to Costa Rica. Really? Yeah. Surfing. Yeah. 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 A lot yeah. of people I heard Costa Rica. recently. Costa gorgeous down there. And then someone knows the window. Yeah. When are you going? Into the base Saturday. And called me down wow, there for how long? Wow. Are you taking the kids or just you and Justin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is family. It's oh, a family okay. vacation. Something Followed by Gettysburg. <laughs> In, Gettysburg? in August. <laughs> kids are like, do we really all have to go to Gettysburg? I'm like, Gettysburg is the one I'm looking forward to. That'll be cool. It is neat. I, I love so the East Coast for the, all the uh, historical, historical stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. So we don't get that here. Are you ready? Okay. Oh, that water runs towards we got one minute to go. <laughs> we went to the Civil War farm, which is great news. And the stairs. Now you guys have your we all have clocks. Uh, I mean your telephone times at seven thirty. It's seven thirty one. Okay, I'd like to call our city council meeting to order and ask everyone to join us in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please. Belke? Here. Belzac? Here. Kenny? Here. Marquez? Here. McIver? Here. Shower? Here. Seifert? Here. Seven present. We have a quorum. The next item is the uh, questions and comments and announcements uh, part of our, of our city council meeting in which the audience can address us. Anyone in the audience can address us on any, any item. Uh, would anybody in the audience like to address us? Please come forward and let us know who you are. Joel Bolabab. Uh, Joel, okay, Joel. Joel and I was I attended the last uh, meeting in April. I recognize you, Joel. I, uh, are you on Iris? Uh, yes. Okay, that's yes. that's why I recognize you. And uh, just two comments. Uh, last week's Tuesday's uh, rain, power was out in that, but uh, I noticed that the water, I mentioned this in April, I said the water will back up however far, 10 o'clock, Go to bed, look at it, mm -hmm. okay, go to bed, 2 o'clock, I got a bad habit of getting up early and drinking coffee. So I go drink my coffee, I come, and it's still there. I come back at 4, 4.30, or 5, and the water's gone. Now, last Tuesday, what, what rain, of course, was not as bad last week, but the water, sure enough, the, wa the drain, the gully was filling up, and it come out, I don't know, 10 feet, I could be wrong, uh, partner is out there. Dan. Uh, Dan probably. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so he can say whatever. But uh, the water was there, and uh, and he was there. And uh, about an hour later, the water's, you know, where it's supposed to be, in the gully. And I mentioned, somebody's got a plug, and they control this thing. <coughs> and uh, that's, the control was there last week, but admittedly, the rain was not, uh, you know, it was a, a heavy coming down. Well, Joe, I mean, I, Dan can do a better job of, of uh, addressing that, but I know that we brought in our, our uh, engineers, uh, Burke, to take a look at the situation to come up with solutions for the problems there. But, uh, Dan, did you want to speak to where we are on that issue? Sure, I can address it right now. Um, as of this morning, I did have a con conversation with our consultant, Christopher Burke Engineering. They've completed a preliminary report, and their preliminary report does state uh, from the survey and that was completed that the water does flow towards Dale Basin. And one of the things that we do not know is the condition of the pipe. The condition of the pipe at best is constantly full of water. We also know through history of some of the work we've completed in that subdivision that the pipes are indeed deteriorated. Many of the manholes, what we refer to as manholes, are also constructed out of metal. Uh, metal is not an acceptable structure in today's standards, obviously. The next part of it is that where you live in conjunction with your neighbors, there is a depressed area there. 
So in order for their drainage to work properly, we're going to be looking at sizing the pipe. Uh, right now, we believe there's an 18-inch pipe in there. There's a little mix of several different pipes in there. We do know that the pipes are clear. We did have them jetted. By having them jetted does not mean that they're 100% fully opened. Getting back to the design of it, we're going to be taking a look at the cost of what it will be to design from Christopher Burke or if we even need the design. But we will be looking for easements. Easements referred to as the side yard easements. Um, at this point, we've identified one of your side yards as well as, I believe it's uh, the neighbor uh, two doors east of you. That's where the depressed areas are. There is an easement in the back. The easement in the back is strictly dedicated only to the sanitary district. For us, that's another option for us to go through the back. If we were to go through the back, it would basically be impossible. The reason it would be impossible is due to some of the neighbors, uh, I think, you know, have inadvertently put gardens in place. Some of them have put uh, some structures, sheds, for example, and for us to be able to go through the rear side yard, the, excuse me, the rear yard easements, it would create more of a mess and be more costly, whereas a couple side yard easements dedicated to the city uh, would be a lot more beneficial as well as economical. Uh, right, yes, Joe, excuse go me, ahead. Question. Uh, you mentioned the water, you know, goes to Dale, at least on, uh, in front of <coughs> our, our home. That's correct. It goes, uh, it's heading west. that way. Pardon? Uh, it's going east. No, no, oh, no, I'm sorry, west. Dale Basin, that's right. I'm, I'm mixing up basins, thank that's you. That's right, but that's the entire block from Crest goes west to Dale on Iris? Yes. Both sides, because we get the... On the other side, on the south side there, of Iris. There is a summit on Iris, mm -hmm. and by summit, basically a high point. And again, I don't have the full report, yeah. but I want to at least have a heads up for this yeah. evening's meeting. So we do have good information, and we have you know, information that could be used to solve a problem. Okay, thanks. Um, I noticed coming in, I think it's off of Holly. They have pipes, new pipes going in. Maybe you mentioned that. It's uh, Brookbank. Oh, That's Brookbank a Brookbank side, job, right. yes. Yes. And I'm saying same size pipes. Now, Correct. well, I'm not, I'm not the engineer like I always said from last meeting, but to me they should have been larger. I wish I, I with all due respect, I wish we can put in larger pipes. Yeah. We cannot put in larger pipes uh, unless there is a more enhanced modeling done by putting in additional pipes or larger pipes we would need to put in additional water storage, which we do not have the facilities for. Uh, by law, drainage laws, we cannot just go and put larger pipes in there. What we are doing is putting pipes in areas that currently may not flow. In addition to those pipes, we're also putting a ditch or swale back in place. What that does is provides additional volume, volume that wasn't there before due to no pipes or due to ditches that were filled in um, or redesigned by builders, homeowners over the course of the years. And Dan, just to clarify, by putting in larger pipes without uh, detention anywhere, all that does is flood neighbors. Somewhere, somewhere along that creek, other neighbors would receive that water where they may not have before. That's why the drainage laws since 1987 really have been changed to, to make sure that if you're increasing the flow uh, the amount of water or the speed of the water, you need to detain it. Correct. Other than minor maintenance issues, uh, like, you know, certain ditch things, but pipes definitely cannot be increased without added detention. Correct. You know, there's a certain, uh, for when you put in pipes, for example, or larger pipes, uh, there's a cubic, cubic foot per second that the water cannot, uh, you know, exceed. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, one, uh, the accusation, though, as far as... Uh, the control of the water? If you let me know where that control is, I'll go out there with you right after the meeting this tonight, okay? Because there is no there is no control. Okay. There is no control at all. So you can't tell me why it goes... Uh, I'll know. tell you why it does it. I mean, basically what it does is the, the surge of rain that we get, the pipes cannot handle it. Why the pipes can't handle it? I can't answer that question for you. Then why is it going? Because all of a sudden it catches up, the system has the opportunity to basically take on the rest of the water. There's several inlets up and down that block. I believe there's yeah. one, two, three, an iris alone. Yeah. Um, 
one, it's a domino effect. So as soon as one starts receiving too much water, the rest of the water has to stop temporarily somewhere. Then it has the opportunity to relieve itself. Thank you for hearing me out. Okay. Dan, is it possible that, that that street is split between Dale Basin and Crest Basin? That was our original thought process. And with the final law, uh, uh, once we look at the, des the design portion of it, there, there is an opportunity where part of virus did or does flow back towards uh, uh, Crest. Yeah. And you've already got a lot of infrastructure in there along Crest Road already, so you would just have to tie into that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Would anyone else in the audience like to address the council? Let's move on to the approval of minutes of May 20th. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Kenny, seconded by Alderman Belke. With, with one uh, typo noted on page 10, uh, is there any other addi additions or deletions for the clerk? Then the roll, please. Kenny. Aye. Belke. Aye. Marquez. Aye. Shower. Aye. Seifert. Abstain. McIver. Abstain. Belzac. Aye. Five ayes and two abstentions. Uh, receiving of communications. Do any of the aldermen have communications to share? Alderman McIver. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a, you know, let's continue about the water. Um, I had re several residents express continued concerns about um, the street, the pooling of water at Aylesworth and Stewart. Um, the resident that's right at the end of Stewart, so on the west side of Aylesworth Drive, the water almost came up to their garage door, but that, in that intersection was like almost impassable. And this happens, you know, I mean, it, it eventually drains away, but you know, it's one thing if it's in a, you know, a, um, a culvert, it's another thing where it makes the streets Im impassable. And, and, you know, we didn't have this situation until they built that, Gallagher and Henry built that last house there and, and developed that area. So I'm just kind of wondering if, are we trying to work with Woodridge trying to figure that out or is there nothing that can be done there? I kind of tend to not really have an answer to them. What we could do is um, we could put our engineer on it and take a look at a modeling study to see if there is any type of restriction in place. But I know I've been out there several times and Gallagher and Henry was notorious years ago prior to the stormwater ordinance to use roadways for detention facilities. Um, you know, so other than that, I, I know there's a large, a very large pipe in the back. And what we could try to do is take a look at, I believe it's a 20, 36 inch pipe that's in the back. Yeah, and it's strange because before that was not just an open lot. And when they finally, remember we, we back in whatever, 2000 and <coughs> when they put one, up the, hi two, the high rises you When, when about? Woodridge started developing that property and then Gallagher and Henry built a house on that lot. Ever since then, it's become like a dam at that point. And you know, the residents kind of suffer, the ones that, that ended up buying that house because literally the water comes up there. You can see where the debris keeps pushing farther and farther up their driveway. And, and you know, I don't know if they took on water. I didn't actually knock on their door and ask. Are they a Darien resident? Or yeah. Oh yeah, Darien. Oh a Darien no, it's a Darien. Okay. Uh, yeah, because okay. originally Gallagher and Henry wanted to put a road into that shopping area there and we fought that Darien that was the one thing that we could successfully fight because that that property was in Darien so they had to build a house there okay but since then it's become like in, you know okay. when it rains heavy rains not even this rain but other heavier rains it's it's completely impassable okay anyway, and while I agree with you I've seen it myself yeah. I know that they had residents uh, through the side yard easement they have a rather large pipe that goes between their home and their, and their neighbors. Mm -hmm. That's the central discharge for that subdivision, or I should say one of the central law yeah. locations. Where does it discharge to? Back to Woodridge into a pond, uh, which would be, there's two ponds there. It goes into one pond is where our water goes, then it goes into another pond, and then it goes back down to Lamar Road. From Lamar Road, it goes bas basically through a field tile. So once everything f uh, fills up there, uh, downstream, it's it's pretty much all regulated. Hmm. Okay. Could it, uh, we might have to um, what do you call it? Uh, video that line to see if there's restrictions inside. I know that we had that one jetted in, uh, but we'll double check. You that know, was a few years ago, didn't we? Do that a yes. couple years. And there was some obstruction at that time. We did find obstruction on the back line 
which was a little bit north of that location, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that would have not had any effect on the one that you're referring to at this time. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. You're on top of it there. Any other communication? Oh, Alderman Kenny? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a few communications. Um, I received a, a phone call from a Mrs. Michelle Gray on the 1800 block of GG Lane regarding tree, a dead tree that was adjacent to her property line with the Park District. Mr. Gombeck got in touch with the Park District and we were able to give Mrs. Gray a, an answer that she was satisfied with. Um, on Saturday, or last week, we were, myself and staff received letters from a Mr. Roger Persher on Golden Grove, um, the 7100 block regarding a sump pump issue. By the time I got out there on Saturday, when it was nice and rainy, it was a good time to check out a sump pump issue. Apparently, him and his neighbor were able to you know, rectify that issue. And Chief, I got a, a call from a Downers Grove resident to, to talk to me about um, graffiti um, on, the, on the sign in front of Citibank. I know we emailed it to you. Um, I was driving out near Town Center today and I saw the exact same graffiti markings on um, a light post and I, you know, for Mr. Gombeck and we've taken care of it. And it's, it looks like it's the same three markings that you had at the Walmart, we had at the Citibank and now this one. What we're doing is we're, we're obviously it's not something that we're dumping a lot of resources into, but what we're trying to do is determine uh, if there's a new uh, tagger who's moved into town because it's clearly not a gang graffiti, but it is in fact, uh, 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 it has the earmarks, earmarkings of a, a, a tagger. Uh, it's a, a scribed name and some type of cursive writing and uh, a circle with three uh, circles, three prongs yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that looks almost like a stick person with three little hairs. And so that, that's, we're, uh, our, our position right now is it's not gang graffiti, <coughs> but it is, it is in fact graffiti. And we've uh, checked with uh, Hensdale South and Downers Grove uh, High Schools to see if there are any new kids or if they recognize the graffiti. Both of the SROs, the school resource officers, have indicated they do not recognize the, the, the graffiti tag. Uh, but we we are still uh, following up on it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all Chief, I have. Chief, could you just clarify? I mean, most of us I, we think we know exactly what tagging means, but it's certainly different than gang graffiti. That I know. But is this typically what is typically just tagging? Tagging is a, is is basically an artistic expression that you, some young people engage in, and uh, sometimes you'll see them in the overpasses of, uh, of of expressways and some really innocuous places that you have to be amazed at how some kid had the wherewithal to climb up and, and, and apply it, but it's usually an artistic expression. Some of the same kids who, who used to do murals or oftentimes do murals uh, in the inner city now do, do, do graffiti, and it, it's kind of a, you see it on the, on, on the sides of rail, rail, mm -hmm. road, yeah, railroad cars, and so that, that's the kind of thing that, 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 that they do. It's, it's, it's nuisance, it's a nuisance value, and it, it, uh, it looks bad in most cases, but it's not related to, to a larger criminal activity. But one of the things that we have have been doing in concert with, with uh, Dan's shop is whenever we notice graffiti, uh, we've been having it removed immediately. So yeah. uh, it, it prevents them, if it does migrate into some more nefarious activity, it prevents them from staking claim in neighborhoods. And so we continuously. <coughs> uh, well, this, this tagger really is uh, energetic because I, I noticed the first one on the, uh, the west side of the uh, DuPage County Transportation Box right. at Walmart. And the uh, staff painted over that. Then the one on the Cushman sign appeared. Right. And now we covered up that one. And now, it, now this sign uh, goes on the, uh, the uh, light post. So this character is really uh, well, this one is energetic. Little, this one is different because the other two are high where they're visible. Mm -hmm. This one this afternoon did the base of the pole. I just happen to be just looking down and happen to see it, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if we're just giving him more motivation to uh, find other places to put his signs. One, one of the things that I, I learned uh, in, in when I visited Israel in terms of their response to terrorism is that if a, if a restaurant or a business establishment is, is bombed in Israel, the next day it's open. So it prevents the, the, the terrorists from being able to claim any, any largesse from it. And so we kind of applied that here to, so that if the kid is tagging and, and we keep taking it down, uh, eventually he's going to get brazen enough to do it so we catch him. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. Dan, did you have a comment? Yeah, I'd like to thank Administrator Vanna because he took the charge. Uh, he thought he was part of our public works team at uh, last week one day because when the Citibank uh, was uh, tagged, 
Brian went out to uh, Walmart, I believe, and picked up paint and painted it right away. So I was there. It took about five seconds and got it off immediately. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, Alden MacGyver. Just to be clear, though, that is vandalism, correct? Yes, it is. So it is. the for the you know, it sounds nice, artistic, but it is, a, a and that's why activity. we're hoping he'll keep uh, whoever it is keeps doing it, so we can catch him, and uh, that's what the case will be. Well, it is a criminal offense, and when we noticed the one that, that, that you identified on the first day, we can, we initiated a criminal investigation, documented on a criminal case report. So it is, y you're correct, Alderman. It is. Yeah. Uh, we got it going. It's on the record. Yeah, Chief, if somebody notices that too, we encourage call 911 because that yes. will generate the report. It will send police out and, and again make that official so we have official and we're able to check that. Yes, sir. Any other communications? Alderman Belke? Okay, sticking to Iris. Last week there was an um, issue at the house east of Joe, who was just here, and uh, Dan Salvato was out there. I was out there and. Um, a tree hit the power line, turned the power off, and then she had flooding in the basement again. So uh, the city came and helped with the generators and helped pump her out, and um, that was that was good news that we were there to help. And I think he helped the neighbor even one more to the east who was getting water as well. Um, I know that she was one of the ones that it was calling FEMA to see what kind of relief she can get, and she had an appointment with them that next morning. So um, you know, I'll follow up with her and see how things are going, but. Uh, you know, at least we were there. She called 911. She called me, and um, I think the response was, while I was on was the phone with her, she's like, yeah, well, I already called them, and then the firemen were just pulling up. So that was Was it FEMA or DuPage County? Uh, FEMA, both, actually. But oh, FEMA okay. was the one that she was meeting with, and then we, we uh, me and Dan <coughs> stressed to her to, to call the county again, you know, as far as the sewer part, and, yeah. and just get a re-estimate, because she had one, but it was kind of old. Okay. You know, to do the. You know, uh, when we were it, when we had those representatives out from the county, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, uh, I don't think I was very strong in, in my opinions. But frankly, we inherited this this subdivision from the county. The county allowed this uh, Marion Hills to be developed many, many years long before it was Darien, and uh, I think they bear some responsibility for all of this, uh, all of the drainage issues that we have to deal with because of this. One of the things I've asked the county to look at is uh, possibly increasing the, the, the share cost uh, for this, you know, the overhead sewer systems. Mm -hmm. So they're uh, considering it. I don't nice. have a good answer yet, but uh, hopefully they're going to look into it. And that's exactly right. You yeah. know, the system that was put in place. Okay. Alderman Marquez? Um, just Alderman Belke reminded me of something with regard to the storm last week. Um, Bailey Park subdivision, Carriage Greens and um, parts of the Carriage Greens uh, homeowners group were out for nine hours last Tuesday from 8.30 to about 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Mr. Larry Wagner, who lives over there on Laurel Lane, contacted. Well, Larry wrote something in the past, which I responded to personally. But I told him that while you may not see a story about it, we at the city are concerned about it and that we make notations of everything like that and mm -hmm. that if Larry wanted to know specifically what the cause of that was, the contact Scott Corrin at the city. Uh, I don't know if Larry did that, but I guess my question is, do we know what the cause of that power outage was for nine hours last Tuesday? We'll have to check, Joe, and get back to you. Scott um, should be aware of that. I don't know offhand, though. Larry, and Larry felt really good to know that the city pays attention. You know, I said, you're not going to see a story in the patch about it, but it, the city does, is concerned because we're always concerned about why it happened, it, was it something that could have been prevented? I mean, it could always be where a power line went down because of a tree or the wind, but mm -hmm. at least to be able to tell residents what caused that. And he was happy to know that we do pay attention to that. Well, that's uh, in the past when we were really going through some tough times with ComEd, we encouraged residents not only to call ComEd, but to let us know immediately too so that we could follow up with our representatives. And we still do that through Scott Corrin. So yes, we encourage residents to contact us after they've contacted ComEd to let us mm -hmm. know what the situation is. So. Just out of, and I'm speculating, I was actually one of the houses that were out for nine hours, and on Bailey Road there was lines that were completely down between Greenbrier all the way to basically uh, Plainfield Road. And I was just remember sitting in my living room and I heard this crack of thunder and lightning almost <coughs> immediately, and that's when everything mm -hmm. went out. So I'm just working under the assumption it got hit by lightning. I, how accurate that is, I don't know. But again, all those lines were completely down in that one section. So. Well, and you know, force majeure, they, they won't uh, 
Right. They won't accept responsibility for anything like that. Typically oh. on outages, um, Scott does get emails from ComEd. We're on their list. And there was a situation that, for whatever reason, we didn't get our normal email notification. And I know Scott was checking into that. I don't recall, Joe, if that was the situation. Did you, have you, did you talk to Scott about that at all? No. Because that might have been the one. If no, not, I, I responded to Larry, and okay. I, th I thought quite possibly. He, Larry didn't tell me he was going to email Scott, but I gave him Scott's okay. email address to email Scott. I don't know if you ever got to him or if Scott responded okay. to him. We'll follow up tomorrow. Uh, Alderman Belkey, did you have another Yes, comment? I had w one more incident. Um, Dan, I, I think I brought this up last meeting, but another resident asked about what happened to the bench on 75th and Cat. <laughs> I still don't know. Somebody who really wanted it <laughs> took it because it was... Ser are you serious? I, yeah. I haven't even noticed. Yeah, it came up at municipal services that somebody took the bench, but and it was actually into the ground, wasn't it, Dan? It was, I know there was a chain attached yeah. to it, so... Somebody must have really wanted it. Oh, my goodness. It's, it was metal, though. Yeah, somebody did ask us for it uh, prior salvage. to yeah, s salvage, you know, so I don't think it was that person to ask us to Holy take cow. it. But That's really a uh, st step in low. Did you file a police report? I don't think we did because we don't know when it was taken, to be honest with you. I mean, well, we just don't uh, you know. see the police reports all the time with the window of time. Department tomorrow. Yeah. Alderman Kenny. Thank you, uh, Alderman Marquez. As a reminder, the eighth, uh, the 1600 block of Claremont, last two Fridays ago was out. No, it was it wasn't storming, it wasn't raining. Just and then I didn't know about it, so I was talking to a resident a couple nights, you know, later. But I do remember seeing comments trucks up and down my street, and I don't, and I I know I talked to Scott a little bit about it, but never got an answer about why the power is out on a. Well, we need nice that's, two, that's two locations we need to find I think out about. Joe, I actually, I think that was the one that uh, Scott and I talked about because that was one we didn't get the notification on. Okay. Th that you so reminded me of that. Yes, it was okay. that particular location. Any other communications? Well, Alderman McIver? Just a question. Does that fall under municipal services? Who? How are we keeping, you know, we, we, we used to keep uh, we used to have know, regular feet to the fire. Yes, we know. used to have regular reports, but I think now it's gone to the point where Scott gives us the report that he gets from uh Yeah, from we, we still get annual reports from ComEd. Um, I think and, annuals and maybe too, too. Well, we f they're formal annual report. Right, we formal. still meet with ComEd. I, you know, Scott's on the phone with them all the time, and we probably still meet with them at least every couple of months. And other than these, this recent outage, we have really had a good history. So we got to the point where, you know, they were doing things, and and those meetings every month or every other week were not needed. But um, I will have Scott at the next council meeting bring back kind of a, a, a short history of again, where these outages have been. But, I mean, would that fall under a, a certain committee yeah. that, you know, just kind of, you know, keep track of it? You know, I don't recall uh, if we ever did. We never did. Yeah. We normally yeah. would bring things um, yeah. to Alderman Ed Podoraski's, Ed to the admin Ed committee. Was it admin? Okay. Um, it, but, it, yeah, when it was when it was uh, happening a lot, we would, were a little more often, when Ken Seaton was involved, we were doing that, so um, we it could certainly. It seems like an infrastructure kind of thing, you know. Well, if it's in a storm, I, it's, it's hard to say. I and mean, we went through this with ComEd. There's so many things that they could do. W again, we just have to see if it's underground, overhead, what particular happened. But we'll get the reports again, looking at least the last several months, whatever we have, and, and let the council know. Yeah, yeah, because I know we have a new rep because Katie's gone. Remember, she yes. came to give that transition. And, yep. and yeah. Any other uh, communications this year? Let's move on to the mayor's report, and the only uh, uh, report I'd like to uh, to give is that uh, I have uh, been in contact, we have been in contact with the VFW, and we have uh, asked them if they would be interested in, in having a temporary location in our uh, strip mall on Cass Avenue on the east side. We have a couple of uh, openings there. Uh, the uh, TT Nails is vacant, and uh, I think J.C. Cuts is, va is available, is is, is um, vacant, and uh, 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 Matt Goodwin met with Scott Korn, took a look at those two loca locations, and he was going to take it to his board to see if they were interested in using one of these uh, locations as their uh, home base for the VFW. So I just wanted you all to know that uh, I made that offer to the VFW, and uh, uh, it would be, I would be, I think it would be great to have them, uh, you know, someone in that uh, facility using that and and good for them. They're they're working 
towards, towards getting their own facility. Uh, I've suggested numerous locations for them to rent, but uh, they really are focused on building their own. So um, this will give them a temporary home w until we have something developed there. So, yes. I just have one question regarding that. Uh, I don't know how they typically operate. Do they have meetings where their parking would impact the businesses that are? I would imagine that their meetings would be in the uh, evening. Afternoon. Yeah, okay. I, I would say that it probably wouldn't be an impact uh, on, on, the, um, on the businesses there. They're not interested in buying the, uh, the whole piece then? Correct. In, in building, huh? No. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I, well, I can't speak for them. But uh, I did go to, we did go to the trouble to find out what the property next to the, um, is it Republic, uh, Republic Bank? Yeah. Yeah, across from Eisenhower Junior High School. And uh, that has a price tag of $800,000 on it. And I relayed that message to the VFW and it was a little bit over their uh, price range. So they are still, uh, still looking at uh, other locations, so. That concludes my report. The city clerk's report? Um, just one thing. Um, meet and greet will take place on June the 17th with Mayor Weaver starting at 6 p.m. here at City Hall in the upstairs conference room. Thank you. Okay. City administrator's report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes. Uh, th thank you, Mayor Weaver. Uh, just two items. One, I was asked to remind residents uh, and businesses uh, they, we have, uh, they have the ability to drop off American flags at... Um, you know th that they're looking to get rid of and they uh, we have a drop-off box here it goes to, to the local VFW and they dispose of that uh, properly in accordance with flag etiquette so uh, all you need to do is drop that off at City Hall and the, uh, they're picked up about once a month um, the second item is um, I wanted to mention uh, last week municipal services spent a couple of days out at our Cass Avenue property and they did really a lot of cleanup that was uh, it really looks it really looks good uh, best we can there's still some things out there that uh, we're looking at like there's uh, some of the vacant storefronts we still have the signs up some of those things that are unsightly but yet pretty easy to to take care of so we did again a lot of landscaping window treatments parking lot cleanup um, there was some structures behind the stores that the tenants had put over time some chain leak fence that was beat up so we're trying to to take some of those things that are unsightly away uh, we met with the store owners, particularly the liquor store, who had basically signage everywhere, and they uh, we had them take down a lot of the signs. And we just looked again at, at other uh, small strip centers, uh, kind of as a barometer of what some of the things that, that need to get done here. Um, and that cleanup prompted a, a, a couple of uh, discussions amongst Mayor Weaver, myself, the staff, and actually a resident in town who's a developer um, and had looked at that property years ago and the issue of, of redeveloping ourselves or remodeling that building came up. Um, we've talked about that in the past, but again, I think with cleaning the building up and starting to see that maybe there's a possibility there that we could, we could do something along those lines. So uh, uh, Dan was in touch with an architect uh, today. We're getting a proposal for, which is, is pretty nominal, where they can actually look at our building and see what kind of uh, remodeling we possibly could do. Really structurally, we need to make sure that's, uh, that's in, in, in good enough repair to hold any, any remodeling. And again, this is nothing new. We've had pictures that uh, previous uh, developers, Bradford in particular, gave us that showed what that center could look like if it was just rehabbed. And I think if we were to, you know, if we have the Chase Bank and we potentially have a remodeled center there, um, it goes along the goals that we had, the council and, and the city had several years ago of cleaning up the property and um, and some others um, what was also nice um, about th there uh, there's several positives about the remodeling including possibly for remodel you don't have to have any of the tenants go dark obviously as the Walmart plan we all know that was an important part but if there's a way to remodel the center and have uh, the current stores particularly uh, many people talk about the meat market but other ones in there are, are important also if they have the ability to stay open through this, I think they'd be interested in a longer-term lease. So I'm telling the council that tonight because if we start <coughs> to talk to some of the tenants about this, I didn't want them, the council to hear that necessarily from the tenants. But next week at the, at the city council, I'm sorry, two weeks from tonight, we'll come back with a little more definitive information. But we just wanted to know um, the kind of the direction 
or, or options we're, we're looking at now. And I did want to pull up um, one item because there's always been this uh, a concept of an open space for this uh, strip center. And there was something that I have driven by on a, on a number of occasions. And if we remodel and don't add square footage and don't need to build out on every inch of that property, um, this particular corner park that is actually in Glen Ellen um, seems to almost fit what maybe the, the city, the residents early on and, and the council has talked about for, for a long time and possibly something like this. So a, a remodel project might give us the opportunity uh, to again take that goal from eight years ago and possibly do something. So we, we need to come back with some information again, but we thought that um, again with, with now the new council uh, just being seated a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, that this is really a good time to to start looking at something that again I think is a little more practical. We've gone round and round and trying to sell the property and have others develop it, and people want the land for free or they don't want it for too much, or or another drugstore wants to come in. All these things we've been struggling with, but again, this concept it, it offers some benefits. So we want to look at look at that and again come back in a couple of weeks. Um, to the council meeting to just give a little more information. Um, anybody can just go on Google Maps for these pictures and get your aerial view. And um, something, again, I thought uh, looked very nice and we've been talking about a lot this week. So we can answer any questions tonight, but again, our intent is to come back in a couple of weeks with, with more of an, uh, an outline that could um, you know, get us to, to this spot uh, if the city council wants to consider this, but we need a, a little more information before something like this is considered. Well, and, and also, the uh, Dan and I had gone out and looked at property behind the strip, uh, that strip mall east, and uh, there is a very good chance that we could put the cross easement road behind all, all of this, this strip mall, you know, to, to, give, uh, to give Chase what they want the cross uh, access from 75th to Plainfield Road. Well, so. our, uh, and, and we have pictures available. We don't need to show those tonight, but one of the things, uh, one of the a concept the developer brought forward several years ago, I, I forget the year, maybe 2010, after meeting with us, was that the, the cross, cross access would go behind our strip center, leaving all of that corner parcel available. So that, you know, again, that's a, a detail that would need to be worked out. I'm just trying to get uh, the council back on a concept that, can kind of set out there ahead of us that we can actually go and chase and I think is, is hopefully a bit more practical, but we'll know definitely when we, when we have an architect that I think Dan says a preliminary cost estimate's a couple thousand dollars to so have an architect at least look at that building. Uh, we did um, meet with the, uh, the resident, Mr. Bacorny, this uh, past week. He was very helpful and, and again does this for a living and one of his suggestions was, you know, you have to know if you can rehab this or not and get yeah. some professional to yeah. tell us that. Um, so anyway, again, it, it wasn't meant to, you know, I, I didn't want to bring this tonight with uh, to the city council uh, asking f uh, for a bunch of feedback because it was just really preliminary. Certainly I'll answer any questions, but at the next meeting we hope to have mm -hmm. a little more detail. Alderman Marquez? Brian, whenever we've talked about redeveloping this property, we've always talked about changing the grading on that middle property because Chase is higher Mm -hmm. And we talked about that if we did go, if somebody bought that property and, and built on it, tore it down, tore the center down and rebuilt, that we would look for them to raise the grade on that property. But if we kept that building there, you wouldn't be changing that grade. Is that an issue? Correct. You wouldn't. Uh, the changing of, of, of the grade, certainly in, in the best case scenario, you know, you would like to have somewhat, uh, you know, similar elevations. But right now, the way that uh, we sold the property with Chase, they need to get access to Plainfield Road, even on the current elevations. Now, that, that will be changed a little bit when Chase comes in. That will match a little better, not great. Right. And they'll have to do some exit road out to, the, out to Plainfield Road. But I think um, we asked that question of Mr. Bacorny when we were out, and um, though that's preferred, he still thinks the way the building is close enough to the street that that's not a big issue. It's still marketable. It's still obviously Mr. Kapoor had this for many years and was able to rent the space out. So, um, you know, one of the things we talked about if if we actually tear the building down and just build another one, there's a lot of underground detention that would need to be built, similar to what Speedway did. And you know, Dan Dan estimated 
a rough estimate, you know, that was over a couple hundred thousand dollars, I believe, Speedway paid for that. So again, in trying to keep this somewhat practical, we did look at that issue, but at some point, uh, if, if, the, if the strip center is structurally, uh, has structural integrity, the, the, we can make it look however we want, because that's just an architect designing it. Um, but the elevation uh, financially is, would cost a lot just to tear the building down if our only goal was to make the elevations completely flat. So, but, and we, obviously, Dan and I beat that up with a lot of other things this past week. Um, and, and again, to reiterate, in an ideal world you would do that, but is it necessary to make that property marketable and keep the tenants in there? That answer is no. So are we saying then that we would be landowners? The well, there, there's a couple concepts that that we would need to you know need to look at. In in what I would envision is we can keep the center long enough to help pay back whatever investment we would ha make to the center. So, as an example, this particular budget year, we have I actually have a half a million dollars in what we call our capital projects reserve that is certainly available to do a project like this. So that is, uh, that's one way to do it. So if it cost us, let's just say $500,000, our, our profit from that center has been about $175,000 a year. So I think the conversation would be, Joe, ultimately, sh if this were to work, should we keep the center long enough to repay that, uh, any expenses we had um, for, you know, for the re rehab of that? And should we keep the center a little longer to help pay if the city council were to choose to do some type of park setting like this? And that, that's one of those points I think we need to um, put on our bullet list in two weeks when we have a little more information for the council. Okay. Um, but it, it, we certainly could do that, and it might make sense to do that. Now, if the other, on the other side, side of this, if we were to rehab the center um, where it looks nice and we have tenants in there with a longer lease. Now, I, I'm sure if Jim's meat market, he's wanted to stay there forever. If we come back and, and tell him our plan, he might want to sign a five-year lease as an example. And certainly, the more attractive of a cash flow we can make this, the more valuable it is. So at some point, we'll have to de decide if we keep the center and, and make money to pay off the, the improvements or that we sell it now because it's a viable center and, and certainly valuable as a, as a, as a cash flow. But that's a, we're, we'll get there, Joe. But we're not there yet. Okay. Yeah. So Alder Brian, MacGyver? yeah, yes. I, I had a question. So the you know conceptual idea that that's you know kicking around, and that the architect would be looking at would be would it be a comprehensive look at that parcel with the chase with a rehabbed um, center, and then would this park be what's along Plainfield and Cass yes. on that corner? That, that's the concept. I mean, just an idea. Yes, that's the idea, and and um, again. It, Probably after the meeting, because it will be easier for everybody to see, uh, behind Dan, we do have some pictures that a previous developer gave us that showed this concept. It showed the chase and how the chase is laid out, and it showed the existing strip center with a rehab. Right. With and it didn't show this park. Lift. Okay. That's why I kind of wanted to show the park tonight on the, uh, on the monitors so you can kind of envision what might be able to fit on the playing field side. Because that still doesn't preclude you from at some point when the economy is kind of in a better state to sell that parcel anyway because that's just green space. You're just you're just improving well, that I guess corner. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, you don't necessarily have to go with the pavers. I mean, you could do something well, similar to... Yeah, I think you'd have a hard time selling it once it's established as yeah, a community park. park. I, I, think, I think part of... Well, the park district buy it. <laughs> the nominal dollar, <laughs> the obligatory dollar, <laughs> which <laughs> might be the offer. But I think what, what, what Kathy and I had talked about is trying to resurrect maybe the vision. So yeah. I think the vision all along was a, a, a park-like setting somewhere in here. It didn't have to be that big, but it, it really should be something that looks, uh, looks nice. So brick pavers is an example. You know, if the council's vision is to put a put some kind of of, of non-active park, not you know, not playground equipment, but something more along these lines, I think th at least what I have been contemplating since the last two weeks we've been talking about this is a something like this. This just caught my eye again, and I thought, yeah, that would be something that I think the residents and council could be proud of, and uh, and could have there for the long term. How many but empty storefronts are there now in the strip center? Just I think it's just two. Two. Two, but the State Farm retired, right. and they'll be moving out of the building shortly. Um, I, they, they might have stayed, 
but if we could have given like, them a longer lease. Right, but something like this might attract, say, some small, another small food establishment. Yeah, because we you have more. Well, we're still talking to restaurants, you know, yeah. and, uh, that come into a, uh, one of these spaces, right. and if a couple move out, a bigger space. Right. Yeah, we, we're content. You know, again, I, all of this is is more brainstorming yeah, stuff. Right. I'm saying something that wasn't, and then nothing's been etched in in stone. But we've certainly been, um, again, with, with talking to our local resident and getting that site a little cleaned up, you know, just some of the energy's got going again um, in terms of trying to get something done that's, that's within, uh, you know, a, a relatively uh, quicker time, time frame and something where we don't have to talk about another drugstore and, and, and nobody really want it. So this uh, would give us the ability to, um, again, one way to do that is you ha actually have a property manager. If we own this building for the long term and knew we were going to keep it for eight years, we would probably get some leasing agent, somebody that could help with that. Uh, but I do know Scott got a call today from somebody who's looking at possibly a hair salon, and they might be interested in something like that. Um, so it's possible. But I, I don't see any reason why if that building didn't look nice and, and we could go out and tell tenants now we're not going to knock it down, we're going to rehab it, that we certainly would, it's a good location. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. um, it's the unknown answer. that's hurting us. I'm sorry, Mayor. I'm sorry. It's, it's yeah. the unknown that still is hurting us of when that right. would come down. You know, we had the coin gold shop yeah. in, and that worked perfect for him, and he really likes it there. Now, I know there was some discussion when he first came, but he was one of the few tenants that would actually come in on a month to month and take it. So um, we, we've right. had him in there, I think, think a couple of years. Alderman Seifert? Well, I think it's it's a really nice idea, and I think talking to people in the city over the last couple of years, it, it's the complaint is not so much that there should be a drugstore there or there should be a restaurant there. The complaint is what's there now. Eyesore. Yes. The eyesore. So certainly I think this does solve that problem. I think the park it provides you know, ad an identity to the city that – some residents might feel is lacking. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, we're not in the landlord business. No, we are in the landlord business. We've owned a strip mall for a long time. So we are in the landlord business. So I don't necessarily see that there's a harm in that in trying to get some long-term leases to recoup that cost. And I think it's, you know, you s there's several towns have similar things. I mean, oh, sure. Downtown That's Elmhurst, where my office, they have a SETI center. And I mean, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Right. And certainly you see people gathering around, enjoying themselves, yeah. and having a good time, I think. We'll just yeah. have to bolt down those uh, benches. The benches yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, I wonder where Sylvia was <laughs> when those <laughs> benches went down. <laughs> I had to add I some levity here. Here we are. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so the, um, it, again, Dan had talked to the architect. I think we'll have some concept proposal tomorrow. And uh, hopefully in two weeks we'll have some preliminary information, even from the, from the, um, from the he's an architect, a building architect. And then we can move forward. But again, as long as as long as there's some vision out there that there's a agreed upon, um, you know, that it's agreed upon vision, I think we can get to something like this, and and, and do it something, you know, I'm going to say quicker than than waiting. Yeah. And and part of it is like I think what we've talked about too. It would be nice to see Chase put the shovel in the ground. We don't have the date yet, but I think that would also help prompt all of the improvements there. Yeah. Alderman Belzik. Is there a grade issue between the center lot and the south lot as well? Isn't the, yes, the south lot would be higher? And so we yes. would have to have some type of stairs or something to, to if you were going to keep the center lot as is. Well, there, there are a couple of things. Right now, um, uh, again, on the, on the preliminary plan, and um, we could bring that in two weeks or uh, you could see it after the meeting, um, Chase is obligated to um, – Construct an access e an access way out an, or an, an exit way out to Plainfield Road. So part of that they'll be going they'll be chopping down the wall for the lack of better description, um, and they have a plan to do that. So in the front the front parking lot of the Strip Center, in theory, that's going to be connected to an exit onto Plainfield Road, which would help some of that grade separation. Now, as an option, possibly. Um, we could bring the access road out behind the building, um, which we didn't contemplate that yet, but it's a possibility, and that would free up some things in the front. So that, that's, that's some of the details we're trying to work out, but uh, maybe afterwards if we have a minute, we can, we can show you that. Cause, and, Dan, you know much more about the elevations and the actual building plans than I do, but th there, there has to be some adjustment with both the elevations, even as part of Chase's approved plans. Right, it's, li it's a little more complicated because you also have to throw into the mix the 75th Street reconstruction with DuPage County. 
So certain exits that are there today would be closed due to the 75th Street construction. The goal of it is that Chase comes in before the construction starts so that all the improvements could be you know, completed. Those improvements are basically driveway closings and openings, and those are the responsibility of Chase. So we were fortunate enough to be able to negotiate that as part of their deal, if you want to say. And By the, the permits way, somebody's uh, telephone, oh, cell phone you, is, is, is causing that static that we hear. So if you have it on, uh, maybe you could turn it off. Uh, Mayor, if, if, the, if, if the council's interested to, I've been mentioning to call me after the meeting, but if Dan, maybe if Dan could just hold up what he, sh what he has behind you, Dan, and that way at least um, after the meeting, if the council's interested, they'll know what, uh, what plans are down there. the one that we had uh, several years ago, a couple of years ago, I should say. Our vision, is which, which is brought back to a goal setting, the bottom picture here is the current condition, current site. Up on top was a vision, conceptual plan that we had. It mimics marketplace. If you're familiar with marketplace, uh, that was the thought process behind it. Again, as Brian said, the architect that's coming to review will review the structurals as well as make a determination on whether or not the building is suitable for a remodel or it should be raised and reconstructed. So this was, again, some of you have seen this, some of you have not. This was the overall plan that Tap, who was the Chase's architect, had drawn up for us. So again, it's a little bit of the, you know, the access roadie, the access road easements. And Dan, that's, with that's their building. I, I'm sorry, just that's old because I know the, the, the access there closer to Cass was not permitted. The, right. sec, the south one was. So that, that's kind of just to show everybody the concept of, of how that might look, but it's not the approved plan. Correct, yeah, the old, call it the <coughs> elevation, or not even the elevation, the aerial, if you want to say. Dan, why didn't they look at the access road behind the building? I mean, why wasn't that like the first choice? Originally they did, there's not enough room there currently. Okay, so how, why would well, it work uh, now? When I say not enough room, right now you have parking back there, you also have loading and unloading, can you make a one way out of it? The answer is yes. Um, if we have the opportunity to gain property from the east, there's more opportunity for us to be able to create that, create traffic. Yeah, we, we talk, the apartment owners also have, there's a common, common line there. And if we were able possibly to get some property for them, that might help give us a little more room. But I think also though, the access road from Chase one, the way it was designed there, one of the benefits was that is, is patrons leaving Chase have to drive in front of the stores. And that was a positive for the, the businesses at the time. So we, we talked through that a little more and, and at some point that was the preferred location because again, the thought was if you have a, a barber shop there, you want customers from Chase to see your barber shop. And if they're in the back, they're not gonna see it as well. But that would preclude you from doing that? No, not at all. Having the road in the front? Yes. There's still room. Yeah, there's. But I mean, if you ideally that park would come right up to the sidewalk, it would having the a road go through there would. And that's and, and that I think is or part of the concept plan that. is you take the the park setting, put it next to the existing building, and put the road on the outside of it adjacent to Plainfield Road. So you know we could flip it. That detail though, so that we need to yeah. put that on. We'll show. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, we'll if you're you. if you're looking for quote unquote kind of that you know coming into Darien look, I, I think that having the park yeah. right up to the I sidewalk like that would be more I agree. Um, yeah, I could show you aesthetically I pleasing like mm -hmm. that if as opposed to having yeah. a road. A road if you look at this particular picture now, you can see there's a store here, but they did make some access road here. So possibly on our site, if you did an access road here and then hit 
and then hit. came back out behind yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we need to go right, through that. Right, but not all, all the way across the front like what that shows. Mm -hmm. Right, possibly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we could if we could have the park look more like that, that's probably ideal. Right. And again, the way this is more of a standalone building, but certainly if that park, if that worked to where you could loop to the north of the building and then exit, that might be preferred in terms of the park. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's move on to department head reports. We have handouts this evening. Uh, back in 2006, uh, if a lot of you will recall, we took on a large project, the water tower project up on Plainfield Road. Uh, some of you might recall, we also had a tank of the year uh, throughout the United States, in which case we won. Well, the awards keep on coming. Uh, this, this time, the Illinois Section American Water Works Association recently also had a contest. And again, uh, our water tower was named as one of the uh, water towers, except this year they're going to be putting it into a calendar format. The calendar <laughs> starts July 2013. We happen to be the March 2014 uh, catalog, catalog cut, uh, calendar uh, uh, prototype for that month. So I'd like to take the opportunity and pass them out to the council members. Uh, I believe the municipal services already got those last week. Uh, whatever we have left over, we'll leave them out for uh, the public if anybody would like one. That's all I have this evening. This made the cover. Uh, no okay. comments. Yeah. <laughs> a little surprise where we came in at. So I know. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, we're ninth in there. Place. Some of them are under ninth place. Some of these are ugly. <laughs> Thanks for telling us how you feel about them. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's any other questions in regards to anything else, I'd be more than happy to answer anything for the council this evening. How about that? Yeah, we definitely have the better looking one. I think it's just whoever the photographer was, Dan. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Chief, no report. No report? Uh, okay. We have no report. Okay. Well, I'm you to Got a hand up here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Alderman Velke? Yes. I have a question for the Chief. I believe this would fall under the Bikes for Auction that was recently put on Deering Connect. Can you tell us how that works? I'm not sure specifically because it's my first time. First time. The public has the right to come and look at the, the uh, bikes and then place a bid on them. Because when you go to the click here, it shows all kinds of bikes from other states as well. Are those not no, relevant? Those the only the only Illinois ones? the ones that we see or have been turned in for us, okay. and they're available for, for, for viewing um, here, here at the uh, police facility. Okay. I went on that site, you can refine it, you click on Illinois, mm -hmm. and once you go under Illinois, you can go right to the city of Darien, okay. and it'll show just the bikes that relate to the city of Darien. Great, great. Oh, good. Some okay. of them are decent. Any other questions for staff? Dan? What do we know about Chuck's? We're in the process of finishing up on inspections with uh, the health department, Tri-State Fire okay. Department, as well as uh, a couple things on our end. Uh, we're hoping to see a soft opening next week. A soft opening is basically certain people are invited <laughs> and you know just um, the opportunity for the chefs to cook, the staff to be introduced, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm hoping to hear that uh, they're opening next week, a soft opening, and then uh, we'll keep everybody informed. Within two weeks, there should be, we should, I should be saying, they are now open. They were telling June 10th. They were telling everybody June 10th. Or like two weeks ago. I've said so many different Well, that's what I announced last meeting, mm -hmm. that they told us at the Darien Dash that they were open June 10th. But I'd heard, but I'd heard you know, rumor mill that uh, something got delayed. That's why I asked. Again, I know, I know there's some, been so many dates out there that, um, you know, they've been postponed due to other problems that have happened. And I like their sign. Their sign looks great. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, if if, if anybody nice. has not uh, got, uh, had an opportunity to go past there, um, it, it's very classy, very inviting. Uh, the landscaping, I think they did really just helped it out along with you know, some of the colors that they incorporated into their building. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, city, uh, the treasurer's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this evening I'm requesting approval of warrant number 121324 in the amount of $21,187.32 from the two listed funds. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Seifert, second by Alderman Kenny. Any questions for the clerk on that warrant? 
for the treasurer on that warrant. The roll, please. Seifert? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Belke? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Marquez? Aye. McIver? Aye. Shower? Aye. Seven ayes. Approved. The, sec the next warrant? The next warrant for the current fiscal year, uh, warrant number 131403, in the amount of $307,622.96 from the listed funds, as well as payroll for the period ended May 16th, as well <coughs> as May 30th. Uh, for a uh, payroll amount of $490,144.59 for a total to be approved of $797,767.55. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderman Seifert. Any questions for the treasurer? The roll, please. Schauer. Aye. Seifert. Aye. McIver. Aye. Marquez. Aye. Kenny. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Belke. Aye. Seven ayes. Uh, uh, the warrant is approved. Let's move on to standing committee reports. Are there any reports from the chairman? Alderman Marquez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a reminder that the next Municipal Services Committee meeting will be Monday, uh, June 24th at 6.30 here in the Council Chambers. What date was that? Monday, June 24th. Okay. Uh, Alderman McIver. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we are proud to announce that we are uh, looking at moving our meeting dates to Mondays before the City Council meeting. So our, we right now we have our next uh, Police Committee meeting scheduled for Monday, June 17th at 6 p.m. It's either here in the Council Do we have the, is the Council Chamber available, Chief? Do we know? No, I think we're going to be upstairs. We're going to be upstairs. Is that conflicting with uh, we're on the first Ours is Monday. You're on the first. Monday, okay, and you're, the on, you're on the third. This, this will be the third. The yeah. third, third okay. Monday. Okay, very good. That's correct, but I'm, I'm upstairs, so you'll we'll have to be, so we can be down here. Okay, yeah. so we'll be in the council chambers. Yeah. Okay, yes. Our, our next admin finance meeting will to be determined in the future. I'm not sure if we're going to go in July. No, yeah, no agenda. Exactly. Items. Okay. Yeah. Mayor, I'm sorry. That reminds me. Typically, we try. Um, we don't have a lot of agenda items. The first council meeting in July, so it's highly likely we'll not meet, but we'll send something out confirming that in case anybody's making plans. Well, um, that would be what? Let's see. That would be July second. Uh, yes. Yeah, because the Fourth of July is on Wednesday. Yep. Okay. So the we'll confirm that, but I just while we're talking about meetings, I mentioned that now. Okay. Okay, let's move on to questions and comments, agenda related. Do any of the aldermen have questions uh, on items on the agenda this evening? Let's open it to the floor. Does anyone in the uh, audience, does the person in the audience have any <laughs> questions or comments on items on the agenda? Okay, okay. Let's move to old business, and there being no old business, we'll move right to the um, uh, we have no consent agenda items. We we uh, remove both items <coughs> to under new business. So let's move right to new business. First item under new business is consideration of a motion to approve a resolution accepting a plat of dedication for the roadway within the Daring Corporate Center consisting of Lamont Roads, cul-de-sac, and easement. Do we have a motion to approve? Alderman Marquez, seconded by Alderman Schauer. Discussion? The roll, please. Marquez. Aye. Shower. Aye. Seifert. Aye. McIver. Aye. Kenny. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Belke. Aye. Seven ayes. Um, the motion has been approved. Item B under new business is a motion to approve a resolution <coughs> accepting a permanent easement agreement between the City of Darien and Nat Natural Gas Pipeline Company of America. And this easement will be on Lamont Road cul de sac. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? Alderman Belzac, seconded by Alderman Seifert. Discussion? The roll, please. Belzac? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Shower? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Belke? Aye. McIver? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Seven ayes and no nays. Uh, new item C is the previous item A under consent agenda. Uh, it is a motion to approve a, a motion authorizing the temporary closure of streets for the Lions Club 4th of July parade and authorizing the police department to assist in traffic control. Do we have a motion to approve? Alderman McIver, seconded by Alderman Belke. Discussion? The roll, please. McIver? Aye. Belke? Aye. Belzac? Abstain. Marquez? Aye. <laughs> um, Shower? Aye. 
Seifert? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Six Alden, eyes and one abstention. Alden Marques, watch what you're doing there. <laughs> that Lions Club member <laughs> abstained. <laughs> uh, the next item under, under new business is the old item B under consent agenda. It becomes item D under new business, a motion to approve a resolution correcting the approved quantities for the removal and replacement of concrete curb and gutter and sidewalk program for our fiscal year 2014. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Marquez, seconded by Alderman Seifert. Discussion? Alderman Kenny? The question I had was on March 18th, if I'm, if I'm reading it correctly, that the City Council approved the, the item for $415,000. There was a correction made and it looks like it's an, an additional $8,000. Okay. Explanation. Please. Explanation. So, bottom line was when we created the agenda on March 14th in conjunction with the budgets, I had taken an Excel spreadsheet that was used last year right. that was inadvertently included for the FYE 14. So the bottom line is the FYE 14 budget of 130,000, uh, I believe it's 130. Oh, I'm sorry, four hundred thirty thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars is what the city council approved for the FYE fourteen budget. Again, the numbers, the eight thousand dollar less figure, was based on last year's spreadsheet that inadvertently was used for the Richard template. Richard and give way. So the council back in March approved the four hundred thirty thousand dollar figure, not the four twenty-two. Four twenty-two, which well, should be should have been four thirty. But in the budget, I think. Or the I'm sorry, the budget was, was budget, fourth, right. Yeah, and the budget was also based, uh, you know, Dan goes out to, we were fortunate enough to have the timing where Dan right. would go out to bid. We got the numbers, they were all put in the budget. And once they're in the budget, especially on these projects, because we want to get started immediately upon approval, so that agenda memo follows the budget approval. And it was just, again, like as Dan mentioned, the last year spreadsheet inadvertently was copied and pasted in there, and the numbers were just a tad less. There the agenda memo had any wrong figures, though. But the budget had the right figures. We approved the right figures. So confused, forgive me. The bottom line is that the 430,000 that we're asking for is the approved number that was approved by the city council for this year's concrete program. The 422 is from last year's numbers. Okay. okay. Joe, you have a copy of our budget, right? Right, no, I have. I, okay. I, I look through it and I just. I'm sorry, and you have to look at, there's several components of it. So if you're looking for a flat out 430,000, you're not gonna find that. Right. The problem is, is that we have the water department, we have the street department, we have the capital program. There's several different components and you can see a, on a description what all those components are, special projects, whatever the case is. So, so back in March, did the council know that you're approving $430,000? Yes, yes. Well, Wait, Dan, I think we're getting confused by the council approving in the budget or the council approving in a separate um, item, a separate um. item um, like we do, Dan. So I think the council came um, and approved the budget 430 and the exhibit in tonight's packet is meant because there are, they're, all, they're in a few different spots, water fund. So this shows everything that the city council uh, approved in the budget, which was for the 430,000 and that was based on the bid. So the city council then, after they approved the budget, that we request that they also have a resolution then awarding the contract. And when the city council issued the resolution awarding the contract, that's when we had the number and the old spreadsheet in there of, of 422,000. So Joe, your, your, your question is, what did the council approve the 430,000? They, the, they did approve that in the budget, but the follow-up resolution was the incorrect number of 422,000. If that helps, that helps. Thank you. Any other discussion on that item? The roll please. Marquez. Aye. Seifert. Aye. Shower. Aye. McIver. Aye. Belke. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Kenny. No. Six ayes and one nay. Uh, the motion is, appro is approved. Uh, let's move on to questions, comments, and announcements of a general nature. Uh, Alderman Marquez. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mark Lewis, who is the chairperson for the July 4th parade this year, sent me an email last week and indicated to me, in fact, I got another phone call tonight before I came, 
that he had not received any information from any council member with regard to their write-up for the uh, July 4th parade. Uh, and I realize that it's a new format this year. Actually, it's not a new format, but it requires each of you to write your own script as you want it uh, stated. So I, he asked me to again remind council members to go back, find that email from uh, the Darien Lions Club, which indicates that there's, there's actually two forms. One is the application form that you actually fill out where you write your script, and the other one is the agreement that you sign and mail back to him. And he asked if we could please have you guys take care of that since the July 4th me is, is coming up. When did you talk to him? I just talked to, uh, I just talked to his co-chair uh, tonight on the phone before oh, I came. I know I emailed my handmails last week. Okay. I was told today that. Well, it's the email. Yeah. Only one had been received. So it's just a reminder. Thank you. Any other announcements? Alderman MacGyver? I have a question. Um, you know, th we've got these plaques, and it's nice that we each get one, but it just seems, ki you know, and, and we've gotten other, there have been other situations where we've gotten much larger sets right. of documents. I hate to say this seems kind of a wasteful. Is it possible that we just keep one, you know, upstairs that we could refer to, note it, I don't know, PDF it or whatever, so that we can, because, I mean, it looks like someone goes through a lot of, you know, trouble to, to make these copies to actually make labels, stick them on, and then, you know. Is there a legal requirement, uh, do we know, uh, that everyone has to be ca given the, the copy? No, no, we, <coughs> we just got the original Mylar, which the clerk has right now, so. Yeah, obviously we've gone to ch trying to get most things, <coughs> not paper, and certainly on an exhibit like this, it's pretty straightforward, I think, too, if there's not, you know, it's, it's not a complicated thing that the council may have to research at home for the weekend. We could certainly just put one on a poster board and bring it to the meeting or have it available upstairs right. when the packet yeah, goes out. Yeah, it just out. seems, you know, like, yeah, it, yeah, it, a, like yeah. A, a, a lot of time, and there's expense involved yeah. in, in generating something like that. No we need to generate paper if we, right. you know, we're, we're trying our best to get away from that, and this is, I guess, one of those things that's still out there that we can, if next time we have something like that, we'll, we'll find a different yeah, way to do it. Yeah, it's so many times, uh, Council members don't even look at their agenda material until the day of, so um, I, I don't know if that would be wise to just have one copy at City Hall for for uh, review. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a tough question. I don't know which way to go on that. I well, you, you can you can you can shrink those plaques down. PDF, PDF it. That's what I'm saying. Just have it as an, a, as an attachment, just like we do everything, yeah. the rest of the packet, I guess. Sometimes you can't read the PDFs, and that's why. I mean, we could always, we'll, we'll start out with putting one as a PDF, and then we'll have a couple hard copies in the City Hall. Yeah, I think what we'll do, because this seems to be the normal size, we'll go back and, and scan one and see what that looks like. And, and, and we have the display now. That. I mean, I think there's just a way to be more cost effective. I don't know. It, like I said, the, pr the printing is small enough as it is on this size. Well Can you imagine well what it's going to be if you I don't think anyone's reading PDF? Know, uh, the survey companies I use, they, they will email me PDFs that I can manipulate <coughs> pretty nicely. Um, so, yeah. They're I mean, I can I even mean pull up on my you can phone make it larger, <laughs> and you, if you have a certain section of the plat, it's pretty you can zoom in. So yeah. it's well, if yeah. it's in Adobe, you can zoom in. Yeah, right. right. And right. then we have the screens now. I mean, I don't even know why we wouldn't be able to just put it up. You know, I, I don't know. It just seems like. We could be more efficient when it comes to this. Well, it's, it always comes down to how, how, how transparent we we like to be here, and uh, do we want it? Does that run into that issue of of being as transparent as possible? Well, we'll put it. I, I'm sorry if I if I uh, maybe I misspoke. If we're bringing a hard copy here for the aldermen, we can still put that on our website for the residents that want to look at the packet. I mean, okay. we, we can do any of that. We just need to call our um, computer consultant, our, our web. Uh, web services and ask for them. I think the question was just here, the council not getting paper copies. No, but I how mean, can we look it at it, but the citizens. It being we'll part of the electronic package. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll have, I'm sure we could do that. Very good. And I'll give you my copy right now to return so <laughs> you can do whatever you want with it. Um, I would like to open it up to the floor if anyone wants to address the city council. Oh, come on up. Oh. Uh, no, I just 
just uh, want to thank can, Dan. And can you business. identify who you are? Sure. My name is Stan Widlacki. I'm the uh, president of the Darien Corporate Center, North Road and Detention Pond, which is soon to be just the detention pond, I hope. <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank you guys all for professionally looking at the situation that we were in and resolving the issue. And I especially want to thank Dan for all his efforts in working with all the different business owners and res you know, businesses in that area to get this resolved. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If there is no further items uh, to discuss, I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Alden McIver, seconded by Alderman Kenny. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. No, Thank you. Really, Sylvia, we really missed that two weeks ago. Nobody, know, nobody knew, nobody to knew do. what to do. We sat here for hours. We sat here. <laughs> <laughs> You've been here since two weeks ago, right?